Most vocal coaches will tell you that in order to activate your voice, you need some active airflow from the lungs because the voice themselves, the vocal cords themselves, the vocal folds are passive in the vibration. They vibrate just because of the air that flows through them. Today, I will explain in detail why that is a misconception and why the active muscle action of the thyroarytenoid pars interna, the, the muscle that is the vocal cords themselves, is so essential for you having a voice for speaking or singing. Hi folks, I'm Boba. I'm a singer and a vocal trainer and this is my channel about anatomical vocal training. Many, many vocal coaches tell their students you need to control the airflow of the lungs um, because your voice is innervated by airflow, but you shouldn't have too much airflow. I have argued in many videos that the voice is not a wind instrument because the voice needs a muscle action in order to vibrate. And today I want to show um, a few videos of the throat and the vocal cords to tell you why I do think that is a more accurate, uh, accurate way of looking at the voice and how to use that information wisely. The conception that the vocal cords are passive in vibrating and you just have to, you know, let the air go through or push the air through, even some people say, um, is so dangerous because it leads, it can and does with many, very many people lead to vocal problems as described in detail in this video. Now here's what we're going to do. If the vocal cords were just passively vibrating in the action, then it wouldn't matter if the thyroarytenoid muscle, which is the vocal cord muscle, um, if that would be, you know, active or passive because it's just the mucosa that, that vibrates. If the vocal cords close and it's the arytenoid cartilages that close it and then um, you know you send the air through they should vibrate even though the, uh, the thyroarytenoid pars interna is not active now they kind of do but it's not really what what you would call singing or speaking even and today i want to lay out with a few videos why and how and how everything sounds when the vocal cord or one vocal cord in particular is paralyzed because paralyzed vocal cord or, or paralyzed muscle paralyzed part of your body means your nervous system can send the signal somehow from the brain to the muscle something is wrong in in, in the transmission and the signal from the brain telling the muscle contract doesn't get to the muscle so the muscle just stays loose in order to measure whether a muscle receives the impulse, the nerve impulse from the brain or not, you can measure that the muscle activity with an LEMG um, technology. That means you insert a, a probe, basically, an, or an electrode on the muscle or into the muscle, and then you measure is the muscle active or not when the person tries to use the muscle. So I have two examples today of people with one-sided paralyzed uh, thyroarytenoid muscles and we will look at what kind of impact this will have on the voice. The videos that I'll use are from the American Medical Association. I'll link the originals in the description. What you will see is some clinical trials for hyaluronic acid and you always have one vocal cord intact and the other vocal cord, the thyroarytenoid muscle, being passive paralyzed um, to a certain degree and through the injection of the hyaluronic acid the vocal cord becoming active again and working actively again so first case this woman has one of her vocal cords paralyzed this is how she sounds before the injection when one of her vocal cords is paralyzed <laughs> Now, you know that one is paralyzed because this is what the active um, vocal cord looks like in the LEMG. And this is what the passive voice vocal cord looks like. E. 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 E.
when they, they both, you know, she, she wants to vibrate them both, but one works, the other one hardly does anything at all. So this is her voice before the injection, when one of her vocal cords is paralyzed. <laughs> and this is her voice after the injection, when both of the thyroarytenoid muscles are, are active. E, e, uh, uh, san, san. You can hear a big difference. Now, you might say, well, we didn't really see inside, we don't know if maybe more muscles were paralyzed around the vocal cord and that's why the vocal cords didn't close because the um, arytenoid cartilages, there are muscles between those that actually close the glottis, right? So maybe these muscles between were also paralyzed. That's why we have a second example of a man with a paralyzed vocal cord. Here you can see that his right vocal cord is clearly paralyzed, it's, it, it, it's not active. Now the thing is, you can hear a voice. His voice sounds like this with, with one paralyzed vocal cord. <laughs> what is very important is that you can see that the vocal cords, the arytenoid cartilages, they, they close, right? So it's really just the vocal cord that is paralyzed. Also with him, you can see that the normal side has normal muscle activity and the not normal side, the paralyzed side, is not normal in its muscle activity in the LEMG. Now, since the vocal cords kind of close and you can hear his voice, like his voice, the, the vocal cords, the, the mucosa is kind of like fluttering, but you, it, it's not what we would call voice, right? Here's his voice before they injected the, the, the paralyzed side with, with the acid. And this is his voice after they injected it with the acid, where it's, it's active again, the thyroid muscle. So that means that you need the thyroid muscle to be active in order to have a sound like a voice. If that muscle is not active, then you will not sound like what we will call singing or speaking. Also, what is very interesting here to see is that when one vocal cord is paralyzed, you kind of like see, nevertheless, the vocal cords are fluttering and they kind of give a sound, but it's not what we will call speaking or singing with a healthy voice. Um, but then once the vocal cord, um, both of them are active, also, the, it looks like they, they are vibrating rather than just fluttering, right? The look is very different from when it's just air being pushed through to the muscle, the thyroid muscle is actually active. It's, it's a very different look, the two of them. And I think this is very important to consider because it means that your voice needs the muscle activity of the thyroid parts in Turner in order to really be like a voice, really sound like a voice. Now, the only argument that I heard so far why the voice has to be a passive vibrating thing, only the mucosa vibrating, not the muscle being active, is that people say, oh, you know, the human body uh, can't, no muscle vibration can be as fast as um, a thousand you know, the, the highest notes of the Queen of the Night, the high F is like around 1,400 hertz, which means 1,400 times per second, the vocal cords need to meet, right? That's very fast. And people say, yeah, that's, that's impossible, that vocal cords can, like muscles can vibrate so fast. However, I have a little comparison there because the colibri, the hummingbird, um, has a wing uh, flutter, it can move its wing up to 
200 times per second. The wingspan is like four inches or 10 centimeters. Now our vocal cords are around two centimeters, 1.25 centimeters to like 2.5 centimeters. Um, two centimeters and 10 centimeters is like five, you know, five times more. So if the colibri with can use muscles that move things that have a span of five times more than our vocal cords, why shouldn't our vocal cords be able to, you know, like do the vibration maybe five times faster than that colibri? I don't know. Maybe, maybe the muscle really doesn't vibrate, but the muscle activity is essential for you to have something that you would call a voice. If the muscle is inactive, your voice will not sound like a voice. So therefore I maintain in order to have a singing or speaking voice, what we would call singing or speaking, you have to have an active thyroarytenoid pars interna muscle. If you don't, then it won't sound like singing. So the voice, Yes, it works with wind, wind, air, pressure can and does have an influence on the voice. But the initial thing that makes the voice going is electrical impulses from the brain to the muscle in the vocal cord. And that's why they vibrate. Now, it's also important to mention that air pressure does have an impact on the voice and how fast the vocal cords vibrate or flutter which I explain in depth in this playlist. So air pressure can help you achieve higher frequencies because if you have a flag in wind, obviously if the wind air pressure is higher, then it can flutter faster, have more high frequency. But the point is that you probably uh, use a mixture of muscle and air pressure, even if you use the air pressure to, to get these really, really high notes. Your muscle activity is of utmost importance and therefore I say muscle activity is the thing that gets the voice going for it to be the thing that we actually call the voice you know otherwise it's just fluttering mucosa which as you saw in and then heard in these examples it's not what we will call a, a voice for singing or speaking all right I hope that gave you some new input and helped you understand a bit why I talk about all these little muscle exercises and how to do what and what not and uh, let me know in the comments what you think about it and you know what are your your um, experiences also with you know thinking about oh my voice is a wind instrument or thinking about oh my voice is an electro bioelectrical instrument that I can you know activate through my brain basically because it does have an enormous impact on how you use your voice and what kind of what you think about support what support is and which i explain in depth in this playlist if you like the content and it gives you something please leave me a like and subscribe to my channel and i see you and hope to see you around don't go yet here's some important information if this is all a bit out of context for you and you don't know quite how to put all of this together i have created a playlist a playlist of the full anatomical vocal training so that you understand from beginning to end you know where it starts why this muscle why that muscle because some of the videos that i'm doing out of context they might be like why are you doing this right so if you go to my channel you will go to the playlists and then you will find the full anatomy playlist uh, right there and it has everything from start to beginning why to stretch what muscle groups how to stretch them why to begin there or what to do so it's kind of like a chronological order so that you can really have a full understanding of the whole thing that I'm teaching here. So check it out, I see you over there.